Hey guys, Tyler here, and this is the Garage Warrior podcast and video cast, and I'm super excited today to have on the call with me, Mark Devine. How's it going today, Mark? Good to see you, Tyler. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to talk to me, man. I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, if you guys don't know who Mark is, Mark is training some of the toughest people in the world how to become even tougher, and he's going to share some mindset tips and training tips and a lot of other tips along the way today. So, Mark, for people who don't know who you are, can you kind of give us like the 50,000-mile view, who you are, and what are you hoping to teach people? Okay, yeah, I'm the founder of SealFit, Tyler, and SealFit came out of my experiences of uh, 20 years with the Navy SEAL teams, retired as a commander in 11 and uh, also kind of an amalgamation of about 25 years of martial arts experience I've had. Um, uh, early CrossFitter, so I'm, I'm one of the earliest CrossFit affiliates. We've been going at that for almost eight years. Um, my CrossFit affiliate is U.S. CrossFit. And also, um, uh, believe it or not, yoga. And so my initial vision was to teach uh, special ops candidates, you know, beginning with Navy SEALs, on how to be authentic, you know, true warriors through an integrated training program that trained them from the inside out. So it was you know, spirit, mind, body approach, uh, as opposed to body, mind, spirit. And that's what's uh, really become, you know, the genesis of SealFit. So I really started SealFit in 2008, you know, out of my CrossFit affiliate by um, launching a crucible experience we call Kokoro Camp, which is 50 hours of nonstop training. It's modeled after Hell Week, but the whole uh, gist of it is that, you know, your body is practically irrelevant after the first 24 hours. Your mind is pretty much uh, smoked. And so you've got to learn how to rely on other attributes of your warriorness, so to speak, right? You've got to, you've got to develop some uh, incredible team focus. You've got to learn how to tap into your warrior spirit. And so, you know, that's kind of a 50,000 mile view. I'm really passionate about developing people um, as warriors, whether uh, you're a, 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 you know, a military or martial warrior or you're a soccer mom type of warrior. Sure. No, that's fantastic. I think everybody needs to cultivate that mindset of success, that mindset of mental toughness that brings you forward. And I'm so happy that you do that. But Mark, yeah. uh, I, I listened to an interview, I can't remember what it was of you a while back, and you weren't always a Navy SEAL. Can you give us a background on pre-Navy SEAL? What you, how do you got into that? Sure, yeah, I, I wasn't, you're right. Um, I didn't get into the SEALs until I was 26. I went through SEAL training at 26. Uh, prior to that, I was actually a certified public accountant. Uh, and it, those two are complete misfits and they're at <laughs> the spectrum. And yeah, so the, uh, my experience as a CPA was so painful that I decided to go completely in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> Kick myself in the balls, you know, with the SEAL program to equal the pain at a physical level. Um, I'm just kidding. You know, one of the things that I noticed in the, uh, when I set foot in the professional world, and it really hasn't changed much, is, you know, just how uh, vacuous it was. I mean, there was really no you know, sense of team. There was no real developmental work going on at the corporate level. I mean, just go to work and then the rest is left up to you. And so people were truly floundering. And when I got into it, you know, because I had a martial arts background, I said, you know what, this, I, I love the developmental program that the martial arts was, you know, bringing to me, but it didn't translate into the job at all. And there was no respect for that tradition. And there was a complete disconnect between East and West. And, um, you know, to kind of wrap this up, I, I just felt like there was more and I wanted to go out and kind of lead, you know, be around leaders, be around people who, you know, understood and thought the same way. And I kept being drawn to the SEALs. And so I said, you know what, that's my calling. You know, that's my purpose. I, I, I'm a warrior. I need to go out and, and, you know, live that life and walk my talk. And so literally just packed up my CPA and MBA, put it in the garbage can and, you know, joined the SEALs. I was fortunate enough to get into Officer Canada School so I could be an officer. But even had I not gotten into OCS, I would have enlisted and just, you know, cranked out a, an incredible career as a SEAL. And uh, that was a great decision because it took me in a whole new direction and put me on an accelerated learning uh, path of my own. Uh, m you know, many of the principles of which I kind of bundled and, and wrapped into SEAL fit years later. So, you know, having been a SEAL for 20 years and now training people who are preparing for the SEALs, what would you say are the top lessons that you learned along the way, you know, in terms of just how to live your life, how to get good results with yourself mentally, physically, spiritually? Sure. Well, there's a ton of them, but let's just start out with this basic premise that I learned that we're capable of far more than we let ourselves believe. Sure. I call this the 20X principle. Like, we literally can achieve 20 times more physically, mentally, and in life than what we allow ourselves to believe. 
so that, you know, that's kind of a prima facie, you know, first premise. Next, the question is, okay, Mark, that's great. It sounds like a nice platitude, but how the hell do we do that? Okay. Well, in order to achieve anything, you've got to train for it. And so the second philosophy or under, underpinning that I learned in the SEALs is that every day is training. Uh, you, don't, you don't just go to work in the SEALs. You go to train. And then you go do a mission. But guess what? On that mission, you train for that mission. All the way up to the moment you step off the plane or the ramp or jump out of you know, the boat or you know, uh, lock out of the submarine, you're training. And then you go do the mission. And then when you come back, you debrief, you learn from it, and then you start training again. And so I realized that, wow, this is a powerful model for life. Right. So why, aren't, why aren't we training for life? And so Steel Fit and Unveiled Mind essentially is a, a model where we train for life. We use physical training. You, your guys um, and ladies who listen to you know well about functional physical training. So that's a, an incredible, powerful part of what we do. we got to train physically so that our bodies serve us for the things that we like to do and need to do in life. It's not about walking around the gym looking good in the mirror. And then we need to train our minds because our minds can be incredible allies or they can be feisty fiends. For most people, your mind is a fiend. It's uncontrolled. It's out of control. It's not focused. You don't know how to concentrate. And so what I learned in the SEALs through long periods of uh, concentration, and focus, and silence, and things that are very simple, learned how to get control of my mind and then to be able to use it to think better, to make better decisions, and to concentrate, and to know what to concentrate on. And so you train your mind. And then another thing I noticed is that a lot of failures in life are really the result of emotional roller coaster or emotional upheaval or lack of control. People get right to the one yard line, they've got everything going great, and all of a sudden some emotion of not being enough or not being worthy or not being successful or not whatever comes up and torpedoes the effort. So your emotions have to be fully, um, fully developed, fully understood, and under your control and not controlling you. And then for intuition, you know, it's a vast storehouse of knowledge and uh, wisdom for us, yet we have no way to train it. And so I, uh, you know, and when I was in the SEALs, my intuition saved my life multiple times and a lot of my buddies. And so I think that intuition is a gift and it's a skill that we train. And so I've got uh, try to you know, strive to train that. And then the last is the, your spirit. You know, what does that mean? It's not just going to church on Sundays, but what does it mean to connect with your spirit, that overarching, you know, witness who's who's watching everything that you do and, you know, keeps you in integrity. And if you're out of integrity, you know it. But who is that that knows it? That's you. That's your spirit. And so how do you clarify that and strengthen that? I call those the five mountains, and they become your training plan for life. So, you know, again, I approach it. Um, I approach training far more than just physical. It's physical, mental, emotional, intuitional, and spiritual. And we all can do it. It's not that complicated. You just need to have a model and some tools. Those are the tools that I learned in the SEALs and through the martial arts that I, you know, I kind of repackage and try to give to you or the, to my clients through SEAL Fit and I'm doing mine. Sure. That was long. I, Sorry about that. No, no, totally. You, you can take as much time as you need. I really liked, like how you talked about all that, um, especially the, the fact that we're so much more capable of, of more than we think we're able to do. Because when I train clients, that's one of the most common things is they always look at the future like, oh, I'll never be able to do that. And so right. I try to train their mindset and just taking those small baby steps instead of taking those large leaps so that they're actually believable for them. Now, you mentioned one of the big problems people have is not having a modality, you know, not having a training structure. So what is your training structure? How do you actually treat your people who want to become Navy SEALs? And how can we maybe um, scale that down to the average person as well? Well, SEAL candidates, uh, I train um, in, in two ways. One is immersive, immersion training. It's the most effective. So I have them come and live with me here at my training center in California. Uh, we're in Encinitas, California. And, you know, I take up to 20 people at a time for one week or up to three weeks. And this is total warrior monk training. I mean, they, they live on site in bunk style. They eat here. You know, uh, we, we get up at five every morning and we train. And we train through to about eight or nine at night, sometimes around the clock. Um and so, you know, in that immersive environment, you know, the training happens at all levels. It's whole person development. And, you know, you check your ego at the door and it's all about the team. And, you know, we train both what I call working out and working in. And so, you know, start with a hard functional workout like a seal fit operator wad and then might go into a 
classroom on mental toughness and they might go into a, um, a, a session where we're, we're practicing concentration or meditation drills. And then, you know, after lunch, we're going to do some skill development. So we might be working Olympic lifts or some funky seal fit skill. Then we might be an endurance run or a long rock or an ocean swim back in the classroom. Then some breathing exercises, right? And then maybe a journaling exercise. So you're, you're really contemplating and getting, you know, really deeply connected to your purpose. Those are the types of things. And then we do this day in and day out and it layers and accelerates their growth. So that's kind of the, the one most powerful way. The second is um, I get them uh, to do a combination of the seal fit functional training and the operator workout. But within the seal fit functional training workout, um, I layer some of the unbeatable mind principles. And so we do box breathing, which is a breathing exercise before every workout. We do visualization and warrior yoga after every workout. Um, and so I'm starting to have them work on the warrior development skills to build that, you know, in, you know, unbreakable spirit. And then I require them all to come to the coral camp, which is a 50 hour mental toughness camp. And if they do that, if they train, you know, the seal fit operator wad, they can max out the screening tests. They develop the, the breathing, you know, what I call the big four of mental toughness of so breathing, visualization, goal setting, and positivity. Those are four critical aspects of mental toughness. We develop those. And they prove it to themselves in the 50 hour Kokoro camp, then uh, they make it. So we have about a 95 success, 95 percent success rate in getting guys through SEAL training and other spec ops programs. Well, no, so the, the people got to take a moment real quick and realize that that is phenomenal. Because what's the attrition rate on like SEAL? It's like 70 percent or something like that. 75 to 80 percent quit. And those are those are the guy of the guys who make it in. And so there's another massive number of guys who don't even start. And you guys are having 95% of people get through the, the SEAL training afterwards. So you're doing a great job otherwise. <laughs> so I want well, to come back to they're the... They're to work. I'm just providing the, the, uh, the, the information and the, you know, the, the structure. Gotcha. Well, I'll come back to the mindset stuff because I do want to talk about that a lot more as we go on. But one of the things I like what you do, Mark, is you've integrated recovery into right. these workouts to, like, to a very, very, very strict degree. And one of the things I see with somebody who's trying to not just become a Navy SEAL, but maybe they're training for a marathon or whatnot, they're not looking at recovery enough. And I think it was Dan Gable, who was an Olympic wrestler, who said, there's no such thing as overtraining, just under recovering. Can you kind of speak to us about why recovery is so important and how you go about doing that when people are doing really high volume training? 